Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Vauxhall, or as us Germans say, the Opel Astra GSE, which is the plug-in hybrid of the Astra, which is new and it absolutely looks fantastic in the front, in my opinion. This vehicle starts at 46,000 euros, or just about, and our test vehicle is going to cost you a little bit over 50,000 euros. But in general, we're going to look at it, see what it does. We're going to look at the 0 to 100. We're going to do a brake test. We're going to do everything that you need to know about the car. So let's get right into it. Let's first of all talk about the front, the competitors, and also the engine and do a 0 to 100 test. So on the front, we have a fairly sporty look. We also have like this smiley face in here, which looks pretty cool. We don't actually have any intakes in here, which are real just in the middle, but not on the side. We do also up here have our lights, which are the LED pixel lights, the Illuminix pixel from Opel or Vauxhall, which are fairly decent. They have that automatic high beam, which blends out the oncoming traffic which works fairly decent and you can see we completely took a fly with us here that thing was crisp to death or something like that we also have our blacked out opal logo or Vauxhall logo in the front and we also have a camera here for a whole 360 degree camera but let me know what you think of the design actually it looks fairly decent in my opinion from the front let's also quickly take a look under the hood and while we do that let's quickly talk about the competitors while I try to find my key so the competitors, when you look at the plug-in hybrid version, you have the Cupra Leon, which is roughly the same price. You have a Mercedes A-Class, which the plug-in hybrid, so the 250 variant. You also have a Peugeot 308 and some other competitors like a Golf GTE and stuff like that. If you look at the non-hybrid, because this is supposed to be, well, let me try to find the freaking button, there we go. Because this is supposed to be the Grand Sport Electric, which Opel claims. And you could have the non-hybrid versions, which is gonna be Golf GTI, stuff like that, which is gonna be a little bit more powerful. In here, we have an engine, which is a 1.6 liter engine, which is a four cylinder engine as well. It's gonna produce 180 horsepower. And we also have electric motor for a total of 225 horsepower with a completed 360 newton meters of torque. That engine is gonna get you from zero to 60 or zero to 100 in 7.5 seconds. We're gonna see that in a second if it's actually true. And a top speed of 235 uh, kilometers. The fuel consumption, we're gonna look at that once we're driving and a little bit further on to the side, but the electric motor does produce a decent amount of horsepower and gets you a claimed range of 64 kilometers. But let's actually see if that zero to 100 is correct. Engine is fairly loud actually when you go at higher RPMs. And we got 7.54. There's there we go. That's exactly what a real life world test should look like. 7.54 seconds. We're gonna do it one more time just so we can see if we can get it maybe a little bit lower, as that is always welcomed. Well, that felt a little bit better in my opinion, yeah. 3.63. 7.14, there we go. With an, okay, we did have a negative slope of 0 0.9, even though that makes no sense because the previous slope was plus 0 0.3. But a 7.14, a fairly decent rate. So you can definitely get it down that 7.5 seconds, obviously only if you are using it with the um, electrical mo engine. Let's move on further to the side, where first of all we can see we have our 225, 40 and 18 inch wheels in the front and also on the back. We have one design for the rims, which actually look pretty cool and they are a little bit aerodynamic because we have fairly big like space in there. Um, but in general, we do also have brakes in here, which have a braking distance claimed of 35.1 meters. We're gonna check that out right now to see if that's actually true. So let's see what these brakes can do from 100 down to zero. Two point five seven. That is a very good number. We're gonna see what we actually got when we go to our history, and then we go on to the drag. We got thirty-four meters, so a little bit under the thirty-five point one that is claimed. We're not gonna do it again because that's already below the value. So that's a fairly good real-world test from the zero, from the one hundred to zero. If you continue on, we also have our Arctic white color on here, which is gonna cost you three hundred fifty euros extra. We also have keyless go, as you can see right there. But the color works fairly decent with the back. I really like it. And like I said, black color on the top, no panoramic roof, but it looks pretty decent in general with the color. We also have automatically foldable side mirrors, which work nice. Keyless go, like I said, only on the driver's side, however. A roof capacity of 80 kilograms, did I already say that? I don't think so. We also have blind or 
rear tinted windows which look pretty good but in general design on the side also looks fairly decent on here we have a full tank which is 42 liters and a claimed WTP of 1.1 or 1.2 liters once we're driving and check how much you actually use when you charge the car and if you don't have battery how much we can use on there then let's move on further to the side uh, geez further to the back where we can see we have a little bit of a spoiler on here with this little inlet in the top which looks pretty decent a fairly big window and also the Astra one thing I did forget to mention you could also get this as a like a sedan version or an avant version as our um, Audi fans would say so if you want to get a little bit more space you could theoretically also get the bigger version of this we have the GSE down here for the Grand Sport Electric and in some LED lights again which looks very nice and in general just look at the design in the back I think it's a very well made car from the design design from the outside it looks very nice and quality wise you also can't really say anything about that if we open the rear um, our trunk it is it has a fairly good spring to it so it opens fairly decently in here we have our charging cable for your um, not for your wall box but you can plug this into your um, just your normal plug at home and it's going to charge you up we'll also take a look at the charger here in a second because we did not go over to the side in here we have 352 liters of storage and you could theoretically also have a little bit more storage down here if you flip over the back seats we could go up to 1268 liters like i said if you want more space you could also get the combi version as our germans say or the avant version which is going to give you a little bit more space let's actually see how much range we can get from the electrical motor so there's a couple of different ways you can charge this car you can theoretically put it in your outlet which is going to go at a speed of 1.8 kilowatts an hour and that's going to take you around seven to eight hours that's what i did overnight and it worked fairly decent it's going to give you a claimed range of 64 kilowatt eh, kilometers um i when i stepped in had 59 but that is adjusted to how i drive so 64 is most likely what you're going to get you could theoretically also charge it with 3.4 kilowatts that's what the normal um what the normal speed is if you put it into your wall box but you can also opt for a 700 uh, 500 euros option which is going to allow you to charge it at 7.4 kilowatts but that only works at a wall box with 22 kilowatts an hour speed so if you just have a normal wall box it's not going to work in there you're going to be limited to that max speed of 3.4 but you're going to be able to charge that in just under two hours if you have a 22 kilowatts an hour um, wall charger um, but that is a fairly decent rate for a plug-in hybrid so yeah yeah 12.4 kilowatt hour battery that is how big it is and it's going to give you that 64 kilometers of range as you can see right down there you can theoretically also get that you can also if you want you can go into the hybrid mode which is going to be the best mode that you usually want to drive in to get a fairly low consumption and you can also charge the battery while driving which is going to result in a fuel usage of around 12 liters however it is going to fuel the battery or load up the battery and then you can drive a little bit more um, eco-friendly after using 12 freaking liters and then going into the full electric mode um, but you could theoretically do that if you don't want to charge it at home and then if you usually drive in the hybrid mode you're most likely what we've been able to get is around four liters of fuel usage combine that with 9.5 kilowatts an hour battery usage if you go in the electric mode if you go um, just full battery or full fuel then you're going to be around six seven liters and one thing that you will notice is that if you want to go full electric or you want to go into the hybrid mode or general just want to use your recuperation you're always going to have to press the b mode otherwise you're not going to have any recuperation so now i've went off the pedal and you can see okay it's using a little bit of recuperation if we do non-b and then let's go back up to 55 and i go back it's just going to glide there is no recuperation in there so you always have to press b to actually use the recuperation system which might be a little bit annoying so the interior is actually fairly, in my opinion, it looks fairly spacious. It is actually, it feels more spacious than a Golf in my opinion, but a Golf is also a little bit smaller or less wide. So this is a little bit wider. We do in here have a fairly futuristic looking infotainment display. For instance, this big disc uh, screen, which is two different disc displays, which is for instance, looks the same as in Renault Megane E-Tech, looks the same as in there. In the middle, we have a lot of piano black, which is not the nicest because it scratches and everything like that. And you also have these covers, which go all the way through. You can for instance crush a bottle in there which is good um, but you do have a fairly decent amount of space in there if you put for instance a fairly small water bottle in there it's going to fit in there no problem but in general piano black not the biggest fan we also have a little bit of a uh, gear selector which reminds me a little bit of an house three and drive modes and our parking brakes in here and here we have a little bit of space not much but you do have a little bit of space in here and also a little bit of storage space right down there where there's a skoda key in there 
The seats are fairly comfortable. You do have um, adjustability for your thigh support as well, which is cool. Side, um, the passenger seat is not electric, but you do have um, function right down there, which is gonna, where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, right there, which is gonna allow you to um, increase the height and the, or lower the seat. That's only gonna work when the car's on. It's energy mode right now, so I can't turn it on. But the seats in general are fairly nice with a headrest, which also says GSE on there for the Grand Sport Electric. But one thing that's not so nice about the headrest is that you can't adjust it. And it is fairly firm firm, and also very far um, to the front. So you're gonna be, it's not gonna be comfortable when going against it. Like I said, interior is fairly good. We also have a fairly nice steering wheel, which doesn't say any GSE on there, so you're not reminded that you're driving a GSE. But you do have also Piano Black for your buttons on here, which are buttons, which is nice. But again, Piano Black, which is not that nice. Climate control, two climate zone. We also have some space down here for, for instance, your glasses, which you can put in there. A glove box, which is a fairly decent size. And the design in here is fairly decent. The quality wise, it's okay up here is oh good. We have this nice little design with a little bit of like a carbon touch, but then down here is not the nice quality if you go over to the side. Top is good, but as soon as where your door handle is, that's all plastic. And then further down where you put your hand, that's also plastic. So really not the greatest quality on there. For 50,000 euros, you would expect a little bit more. We do also have a heads-up display, which is an option that you can get, and a better um, sound system, which is also the hi-fi sound system, which sounds actually very decent. My seat's also electrical and memory function, but you don't have massage function in here. You get that in the non-GSE version. And also heated seats, but you don't have cool seats. You might expect a little bit more space in the back, but you really don't have much space. If I put the feet all the way down, you really you don't have much knee room. Headroom, however, is fairly decent. You could probably sit in here with a meter and 80 or six foot two or six foot one. You're probably gonna be able to fit in there. And also the leg room in general is just not the greatest. You do have some pockets in the front, which you can use in the middle. You have two climate zones, um, which work fairly nice. You don't have adjustable temperature in there. Also USB-C down there and some more storage space on the bottom. Seats are actually cut fairly wide. So if you're a bigger person, that's gonna be fairly comfortable. But if you're a small person, you don't have that much um, side support. So it's not gonna be the nicest. They are fairly comfortable. So you could sit in here for a longer time. You also have a just Oh, geez, adjustable headrest, which you can change. So you have a better view out the back or you just want to use headroom. You also in the middle have a fairly hard to get to center console. You have hiccups now. Uh, um, some cup holders in there and you actually can put the middle down, but that's just going to be very small storage space. However, you could probably get one set of skis through there. So that is a nice touch. For your Isofix points, these have this little... Um, um, yeah, whatever it's called, you know that thing, and you can open it, or a zip tie, there we go. Actually, no, it's not a zip tie, is it? No, it's a, it's a, I don't know what it's called. Um, but then you have your hole in there, <laughs> um, where your isofix point is in there, so fairly easy to reach, but once this hook rips off, you're done for. It's like that Spider-Man meme where that guy zips up his suit and then it just flips off and he's like, oh, oh, oh. you know, it's like that. Um, side quality is basically the same as in the front, where your hand is, you don't have the nicest quality, otherwise you have some suede um, leather in there and then your sound system on the bottom as well. That's basically it for the back. So how does it feel to drive the Vauxhall or the Opel Astra GSE? It's supposed to be a grand sport electric vehicle and it, well, we're gonna talk a little bit about the electrical and the general sportiness a little bit further on. Let's first of all talk about the ride quality and just the comfortness that you get. The ride quality is actually fairly decent. You get a fairly nice comforting suspension, which does well. It, uh, smooths out most of the bumps and actually feels pretty enjoyable to drive even at higher speeds it is fairly fairly nice to drive over long distance as well we do have quite a lot of assistant features which is going to make it a little bit more um, comfortable however for instance lane assist and lane lane centralization on here we found is not the best and it really when you're going a little bit faster it really doesn't stick to the road that well and it goes over onto the other side of the road sometimes and it just it, it's supposed to be like it, it feels or it's trying to be very smooth but without being too smooth it takes way too long to actually turn into the corners and therefore it drifts out a little bit too far to the other side we do have sort of blind spot assistance we have um, a speed limiter we also have a cruise control adaptive cruise control we do also have a heads-up display and in general one thing that i'm not the biggest fan of is the looks of the display that you have in here you have no buttons where you can change it however you could theoretically go through the menu and then change that you have three different um, like layouts in there so the top that you can see where the speed is right 
right now. You could change that to whatever you want. On the left with the cars, you could put RPMs in there or something like that. And on the right, you can basically change it to something else. But you always have to go through there and you don't have any buttons to quickly change it, which is not the nicest thing. Steering wheel feels fairly decent in the hand fairly direct system. You also have pedals on the back, which you could use to manually shift, but you don't have a full manual mode. You also have a sound system, which is fairly decent. And in general, the isolation in the car is also fairly decent. So it's a fairly quiet cabin, which is going to be comfortable over long roads. And then while we're driving in town, let's quickly talk about the surrounding view, which is fairly decent. You have fairly small side uh, mirrors, but they give you everything that you need. Also, the surrounding view is fairly decent. However, you do have a fairly big um, C pillar down there, which is not bad, but it obviously is going to hinder a little bit of your view. However, you do have a 360 degree, degree camera on board. So if we go into reverse, we can see that we have a 360 degree camera on the side where you can't move the car around, but you can press on the different views and then you can see where you are. If you, for instance, back up, you can see we have a fairly good camera, which actually moves with where you're looking. So you could theoretically also do the big surrounding view, like that guy is on his <laughs> in his lawnmower. That looks pretty good. Um, and then you also have a front camera, which automatically switch if you're going to drive on the front. It does that, which is nice. Okay, that's a pretty cool car as well. Look at that thing. Um, and that is basically it for the camera. And you can see if we go into drive, it's gonna adjust as well, your side mirrors um, on both sides, just so you have an easier accessibility to go out. Um, yeah, so when you're driving in town, you can also have, um, well, you, you have the good thing that the turning radius is fairly small, 10.5 meters, for instance, in A-Class is gonna give you 11 meters, so you have a fairly decent maneuverability, which is nice. So let's do a little bit more sporty drive because that's what the car is supposed to be doing. Let's go into the sport mode which is right down there. And then we can do a little bit of flowing in here. And we also have the RPMs in there now. So you can see red line is at around 6,300. That's when it shifts up. And you do have a little bit of sportiness. You do have a 225 horsepower engine, which is not bad. You also have a fairly direct steering, which does allow it to be fairly sporty. And in general, the corner capability of this is actually also not bad. You can take the corners a little bit, which does actually feel fairly decent. Lane assist is not going to kick in because you can turn it off, which is nice. But one thing that is not the coolest is that it is a fairly heavy car. 1.7 tons is going to not make it feel that sporty. And it just doesn't feel like it's a compact, small vehicle that you're going to have a lot of fun with. It feels a little bit bigger than it actually is. And then also takes a little bit before, like, if you... Let's, Let's test it one more time. If you put your foot down, it's gonna take a well while to actually build it up and then accelerate you. You might expect, okay, the electrical engine might help you a little bit, but here, full pedal. And you don't get that kick right away. It takes a little bit to build it up, obviously because you do have a combustion engine here, so it's not gonna give you the RPMs. Oh, that guy, <laughs> that guy wanted to go a little bit sporty as well. Um, you're not gonna get that, get that full Newton meters of 360 straight away and just doesn't have the same kick as an electric car, but you can still go around here a little bit faster and just have a little bit fun with it. But like I said, fairly heavy car, and therefore it just doesn't feel that cool as a Golf GT or something like that. And the, just in general, transmission is not the greatest. It takes fairly long to, to, to change into gears. It's more of a comfortable transmission rather than a sporty transmission. So what's our final verdict on the Opel or the Vauxhall Astra GSE? Well, it is a fairly decent car. It looks very nice, in my opinion, from the outside and also the back, the inside. Also, it looks fairly decent. You do have a fairly high price range of almost 50,000 euros with our test vehicle, which is going to put you in the price range of a Mercedes A-Class, um, um, Audi A3, um, plug-in hybrid, or even a Golf GTI, for instance, which is going to be 6,000 euros cheaper, actually. But you do get a fairly decent standard equipment on this car, which makes the price a little bit more justified. However, the sportiness of the car is not really that given because of that transmission that you have in here, which is not that sporty. But in general, it's a fairly decent car. If it would just be a little bit more sporty, it's gonna, in my opinion, be a perfect car. Fairly decent range on the car as well, but in general, a pretty decent car. If you obviously want to get a bigger one, you can also get the limousine version, uh, not the limousine, the um, Avant version or whatever you want to call it of the car. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. Make sure to subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.